What's up my beautiful people? So today's video is two jobs rolled into one video. I had to do this on my boat and then I had to do this on my friend's wind's boat. And the problem is his boat's white and my boat's blue. So when you see the boats change color in the video, please don't ask me why the boat magically turned from blue to white. That's the reason. You may not have even noticed, but I'm just telling you guys to preempt 400 of the same question on my comments. So before we get into that, I want to show you the most custom, the most beautiful, rental car I have ever had the pleasure of driving. What's up? This is Kai. Kai, say hi to everybody. Hey, everybody. Kai is um, eerily like me. I mean, bought a boat, captain, ex-military, same age, likes all the same music. I kind of got a bromance with Kai right now. <laughs> Kai's girl, Allie. Hello. Also boat captain, uh, raised on a boat, and general boater girl. Unfortunately, Laura is the only odd man out here. She Aww. is not raised on a boat or a captain. <laughs> But she makes up with it with cuteness, or it with cuteness. Uh, so today we are anchored in a very protected bay. Uh, that's semi-clear, clear enough to do this job. And I'm going to be going down and taking the propeller apart, bringing the parts up on the deck, and then re-pitching the prop. I think that I pitched it to 18 degrees, so I'm going to verify that. And I'm probably going to go up to 22 degrees, so I'm going to change it by 4 degrees and we'll see if that like makes the motor fine. So the problem is, and the reason I'm doing this is, <laughs> I had taken a picture of the pitch of the prop before I took it apart so I could put it back together at the same thing, and then I dropped my phone in the water. So I didn't have the pitch, so I called Oyster and I said, hey, what's the pitch supposed to be for this? And they said, oh, some people put it to 18, some people put it to 20. I put it to 18 and it's way wrong. It's at full power, the governor stops the engine at about 2800 RPM and I'm only doing like three and a half knots. So that's at 2800 RPM, which is which is way too high for the motor to run. I read in the MaxPot magazine or magazine or, um, book that each two degree change is minus 15%. So I'm gonna go ahead and do four degrees. That'll minus by 30%, which should be roughly like 9,000 RPM, so it'll run at like 1,800 instead of 1,700 instead of 2,800. And I'm thinking, yeah, hopefully it works. I don't know, it's because I don't know if it's hitting the limiter or if it's actually like that's where it's supposed to be. That's the max with everything. I should be doing like seven knots though on her motor and I'm doing like four, so. All right, cool. So uh, yeah, let's do it. So plan is I'm going to go down there. The bolts on this thing have wire. So I got to cut all those wires, get them out and then get the nuts off, get the back of the thing off. And the back of the thing is connected to all three blades. So I'm going to pull that off as one piece and put it up here on the deck. That'll happen really fast. And I'll pull it up on the deck and then that piece stays as a cohesive unit. And I just need to rotate the outer piece and change the castle nut inside. But for that, I'm going to have to rinse off, dry off, come in here, pull up the manual, and we can go through that together, exactly how to do that and what the table is for what I need to do. So that's the plan anyway. <laughs> Let's do it. We got one bolt left. So I didn't do the umbrella thing because I don't want to ruin the umbrella. What umbrella thing? We tie an umbrella upside down, that way if you drop any parts, it lands in an umbrella. I was wondering why there's an umbrella on board, is that why? Yeah, but I don't think I'm going to do the umbrella thing. Okay. <sighs> okay. I got one bolt left, I'm going to take the bolt out, take the whole thing off and bring it up here. Cool. to 
used to be home Passing by those little towns I know so well Stopping for gas and then I'm behind the wheel again Driving this like a spiritual cleanse Where every mile is a new beginning And every brand holds a new end Eyes on the road, don't lose control I'm speeding fast to chase my soul I'm driving to get away Running through emotions high and low Holding on a leg For the sky, I had it all but lost and fell back down again. Spent my time playing the game where every single day was a losing battle and every drink was a dead end. Eyes on the goal, don't lose control. I'm living fast, I've lost my soul. I'm driving. Emotions high and low Holding on or letting go I'm fighting Another day Dropped it. <laughs> there goes four grand. <laughs> Getting towed out of here. Dude. Okay, cool. We're good. Let me just take the cats on that off. Can I have a um, couple of paper towels? Yeah, can I get one too? Okay. No, that's a little flounder, man. Don't kill it. It's not even a treat. Running through emotions high and low Holding on or letting go I'm fighting another day Heading back to what used to be home Where every mile is a new beginning And every bend goes a new end Okay, I'm gonna stop the video for a minute and do some technical stuff. If you don't wanna see this, just skip to the next section. If you do have a max prop and you would like to be able to do this underwater, it's not that hard. There's not very many pieces to this thing, but you need clear water and you need a sandy bottom. That way, if you drop anything, you can get it back. I already mentioned the trick about the umbrella. You tie it to the prop shaft and you drape it under the boat open. That way, if you drop anything, it'll fall inside there, which as you saw, I did, but we got the piece back. So the easiest way for me to explain this is with the manual for Max Prop. This is the manual for the three-bladed Max Prop. The two-bladed Max Prop is a little bit different, but same concept. Here's the exploded diagram, and we're gonna work from left to right. Number 14 is a piece of zinc, and that's on there because it's less noble than bronze, and bronze is less noble than stainless steel, and most prop shafts are stainless steel, so the prop will end up getting eaten away by electrolysis without that piece of zinc. Next up is the end cap, that's number 11 here, and that houses all the propeller blades with the spacer, number 10, that ties them all together and makes them rotate together. Now this is a pretty unique design because it's a feathering prop, and if you go in forward or in reverse, it's pitched to the same pitch, so it'll give you the same thrust, in forward and reverse, which is a very nice upgrade from a fixed prop, which doesn't have the same pitch in reverse than it does in forward. Next up is the central cone gear, and the cone gear is printed with a bunch of letters, and we're gonna call that value X. So our X value is going to be a letter, and we're gonna line that central cone gear up when we put it in. It's got a little tab on it, it's really easy to see. And the last piece we took off was the two halves of the spinner, which is number seven here. That also has a mark on it, and we're gonna call that mark Y. So as you can see on this page, the central cone gear is marked X on the left-hand side here. And as we have a right rotating propeller and want the pitch to be 18 degrees, if we look here, 18 degrees equals E. So when you put that central cone gear in, you're gonna line up the dot with E. If you look on the right-hand side of the page, you'll see that there's a picture of the actual dot in the two halves of the spinner. And there's a drawing representation of it below. Also right hand rotation, if we look here, it says H. So now if you put that all back together and you get the 
central gear in there and you get the mark in there, before you put the blades on, you have to either tape or mark the two halves of the spinner because the spinner will spin as you're trying to put the blades on. You gotta make sure it doesn't spin anywhere or it'll change the pitch of the prop drastically. The last thing and most important thing that I did not read during my initial assembly of this thing and why I'm doing this job in the water is that the blades must be completely feathered when you put them on. So you put them in the feathered position and then you snap them on, make sure everything's lined up, put it all together, grease it, boom, you're done. Not a big deal, not very difficult, but if it's your first time and you've never taken a max prop apart before, it might be better to hire a diver for this. So the only thing left is putting it back together. We're gonna go to shore and find, try to find the anchor. Is that the plan? Where are we? We are in Fort Foyk Bay right now on the, hold on. You just told me, Ali, the west side of the island? East side of the island. <laughs> we are here to uh, reposition the prop because it's kind of shallow and calm here. So are we ready? Sure. Okay. You guys wanna go to shore? Go get the thing. Run. Thank you. Yeah. Let me take that too. Oh, uh, yeah. So today is Sunday. Sunday. So that means it's party day in the Caribbean. So a bunch of people have brought their boats out. Here we come. Elsie is in my notes. Elsie, what are your thoughts? I think Elsie's just excited to be here. Very. Hi, baby. Ready, Wilson? Jump! <laughs> oh my god, so cute. Yeah, this is uh, Fort Bay. It's home of the Fook Dag Party. It's like the biggest Caribbean boat party every year. It's in January. Thousands of boats all strung together here. That's Elsie there. You can read more about Elsie at kaipirate.com. Shameless pitch. <laughs> Wilson's having a good time. We should just attach the GoPro to Wilson. Go back? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, first. Jump. Hop. All right. 
Yeah. I love this bay, it's so pretty. Did he egg? Yeah! Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, nice, though.